up you guys welcome back thank you for stopping by to the channel appreciate you watching appreciate you tuning in I don't know what that guy was on didn't wave back at him though but anyways guys I hope you're having a good day today I want to talk briefly about what I think is a pretty pretty significant factor in regards to motorcycle safety and competence and all that jazz um, and it's actually quite relatable to pretty much everything else that you do in life in you know in regards to something that you have to train for to get better at um, and that's basically it, what I'm what I want to talk about is confidence right confidence and confidence in execution we'll say so when you're riding a motorcycle and you start to develop skills, uh, you start to get more comfortable on the bike. You know, you're able to keep your balance better. You're able to make turns more comfortably. You you can, you know, you're you're not scared while you're in traffic. You're not scared having to go, you know, above 30 miles an hour, right? These are all things that you do when you develop as a motorcyclist, or you start to notice these things. And so as you progress even further, you start to develop confidence in certain aspects of your motorcycle motorcycle skills. For instance, you may you may think you may have gotten into multiple encounters, you may have trained a bit, and you may be very confident in your braking skills. This is how we develop as riders and how I can see myself developing every single day as I ride. Okay. So the reason that this is key when we're con when we're concerned with safety and our overall well-being on motorcycles is because as with everything else the more confidence you have the less hesitation you will have in regards to executing maneuvers okay so if we think about someone who's trained in, who's been in the military and they're trained very well in you know, we'll say this. This is kind of an extreme example. I could use a more subtle one, but um, it's one that I'm familiar with, so I will use it. Um, not, not that I'm experienced in it, but I am familiar with it and I understand it as it's something I've studied at, in, both in school and outside of school recreationally. So basically, if someone's in the military and they've been trained in, say, close quarters combat, they're very familiar with a firearm, multiple different types of firearms. Those are going to be the kinds of people that won't hesitate and will have confidence in the situation as severe as, say, an active shooter or, you know, a home invasion, burglary, you know, armed robbery, whatever it may be. These are the types of people that are going to have that confidence and are going to be able to act in a way that will more than likely save themselves and the lives of others. Now, it's not always going to be saving yourselves or the lives of others. In fact, most of the time it's not when we're concerning confidence and lack of hesitation. But in motorcycle riding, a lot of the times it can be life or death. Just like it is with, you know, in, in the firearm case I talk about. Or, you know, a violence case, we'll, we'll, we'll call it. Because those people, say in the, in, you know, the case of the military trained person, they're going to have experience working with these firearms they're gonna have time in the game and so they are mentally strong enough to understand what's going on in that situation and be able to think quick enough and decide what action course of action is the best and you know what they should do to kind of eliminate that dangerous situation and it's the same thing on motorcycling okay it's the same concept. It's not the same exact thing, but it's the same concept and same fundamentals. So when you're practicing motorcycle riding, you're practicing coming to emergency stops, practicing swerves, you know, anything it may be that the uh, your state requires you to do uh, to get your license. They don't do near enough, but you know, they may expose you to it. These are the types of things that you should practice and you should get better at so you can be comfortable with. That way, you can be confident with them. Because when you're confident with them, you won't hesitate. And there is, I'm gonna, I want to repeat this multiple times, but there is 
zero time for hesitation on a motorcycle. There is zero time for hesitation on a motorcycle. Even more so in the firearms case I explained. There is never time for hesitation, okay? So you have to be confident in your abilities through good training, good experience, and overall time on the bike, or time behind, you know, time behind the trigger, whatever the case may be. You have to have that confidence, and you get that through time and through practice. And finally, a very important point is you get it through pushing yourself to your limits. Okay, I talked about this in my video where, where we mentioned um, you know, practicing emergency maneuvers. You have to push yourself to your limits in your training because that is what gives you that real life aspect of it, okay? A guy I followed for a while, and I still do occasionally follow, just not as much, is Jocko Willink. And he is a you know, former Navy SEAL, so that's kind of one of the reasons I know a little bit more about that and use the firearms as a, <clears throat> as a case study for this example. He would, it, it's always, he's always talking about inoculating yourself into these real life scenarios, okay? Because a lot of the times, when you think about like, police officers for example they you know they they do all this training and you know they spend all this time you know whether it's in the firing range or you know mental training you know talking about what you have to do in a situation they spend all this time talking about it but not actually doing it now obviously there's constraints to you know shootouts you can't perfectly mimic a shootout but you can come very, very close to it. And that's one of the things Jocko would always talk about is that police and police, for example, need to have very dedicated training to simulating those types of scenarios that they're gonna be in, right? So that when it does happen, they're able to quickly react and they will have confidence in what they're doing and they will not hesitate, okay? And again, it is the same thing with motorcycling. It is the exact, it's very, very similar, okay? Like I said, there may be minute details, obviously the specifics of it. One's riding a bike, one's shooting a gun. The fundamentals are the same, and it is going to be something that you have to understand as a motorcyclist. You, you have to get your training up, and, it, and it's, almost, it's almost something that you should be very dedicated to on motorcycling because Oftentimes we put ourselves in life and death scenarios on a motorcycle, whereas things like going to the grocery store or you know riding a uh, you know a bicycle on the sidewalk they're less dangerous. We put ourselves in <clears throat> many other situations that are less dangerous. Hence why I think that motorcycling should be a little bit more of a priority when it comes to training these types of things. I choose what I think is more important because it puts me in more dis dis dangerous situations oftentimes. So if you're a military personnel, you're gonna be training for, you know, gunfights and stuff that you're gonna be exposed to, to where you need to have that competent training to back up on, right? Anyways, I hope this was helpful for you guys. I really do hope that you employ these, these tactics that I talk about and you can, you can understand them fully because they will help you. So take it easy guys, ride safe, and have a great rest of your day. Peace.